Hi guys, it has been a long time since my last video, sorry for the delay. Today we will be talking about the PKA Gustav, a classic MAK armor suit that many fans adore. First, some background information about this lovely suit. So, in 3rd September 2884, the PKA was enlisted in the SDR army, and after numerous real combat testings, it was believed that this armor suit is invincible. Nevertheless, frontline soldiers realized that when PK needs to disconnect from PK-41 to join close-range combat with the enemy AFS, and later the powerful SAFS, its poor armor protection and armament doesn't stand a chance, especially the glass canopy that was designed to offer better visibility in air has now become a burden, making the pilot vulnerable against any sort of enemy fire. Therefore, the Weapon Development Office decided to modify the PKH-0 to enhance its ground combat ability. The modifications revolves around the following requirements. First, the new PKA must have the firepower that is at least equivalent to the enemy SAFS. Second, the armor should be able to sustain the direct heat from laser gun carried by SAFS. Third, the new PKA should have the same or higher level of maneuverability compared to the H0 model. Through the capture SAFS, the development office managed to increase the PKA firepower by encrypting an improved version of the SAFS laser gun, and it is called PWM41-KZ. This laser gun has a higher power output compared to the original one on SAFS. And to achieve the second requirement, they went through a series of experiments on different materials, combining super ceramics and heat resistant fibers to forge an extra layer of armor. At the end, the extra weight brought by the improved firepower and armor protection led to some more adjustments in the body framework, which made Gustav a very different creature from the Edge models. Besides that, to further improve the armor protection on the canopy, which was a serious problem in the PKH series, the upper half of the canopy is replaced with a layer of armor, and a foldable armor plate is installed on the lower side of the canopy. But this piece of armor plate can be a pain when Gustav Pilot is maneuvering in the air, since the plate is blocking their view. The visibility is so poor in the air that some pilots rather risk being shot at the neck and lower the armor plate during combat. However, to be fair, the PK Gustav is an overall well-balanced armor suit for the SDR army at that time, considering it is much easier to maintain compared to the early Edge series model. The Stroll army started the mass production of PK Gustav in 2885, and it can be seen almost everywhere in the front line. Here at the bottom is the evolution of the PKA armor suits. From the prototype to the Edge series, which they enhance the armor protection, to the G and K series, which they improve the firepower and overall design. Now let's talk about the color scheme of the PKA Gustav. The one on the left is Lieutenant Kyle Schneller, 2nd Platoon 401st Armor Fox Hunter Battalion deployed in operations south of Hudson Bay, North America. This unit has a unique color scheme, a melon-like camouflage that can create an optical illusion at long distances. And the unit deployed in North America will repaint their armor suits in winter season, with a winter of white water base paint, like the one shown on the right side of the picture. And this one, with off-white camouflage belongs to the 12th Armor Guards Battalion, deployed in North America, Lieutenant Otto Brandis. The camouflage used by the unit from the beginning of spring to early summer is very effective. It is said that its camouflage color scheme is inspired by the protective coloring of animals such as saber-toothed tiger and triceratops. The unit markers and the one with mosquito on it, also appear to be newly created at this time since they are very bothered with the mosquitoes there. 
Additionally, for units deployed in North America, all their unit signs and marks are also covered with a special paint that can lower the surface reflection, creating low visibility. Here's another four combat schemes. The first one on the top is Marco Wilmot, commander of the 1st Platoon, Pumpkin Troop, 2nd Company of the 1st Panzer Trooper Regiment. This unit was stationed in Goshenkirchen. The unit was regarded as an elite force and fought numerous mountain battles with a small number of armor suits, which were exhausting for both the soldiers and machines. However, the survival rate of the unit was very high, due to the mountainous terrain, having missing combat personnel are rather common after every battle. So this unit developed a tradition for the lost in combat soldiers. When the missing person managed to return to the unit after a few days of disappearance, they would be branded with the mark of a pumpkin on the left chest of their armor suits, meaning they got taken away and returned it by ghosts. The one in the middle is Eugene Lowenhard, Task Force Commander, Independence 2001st Company. He was the other joint in the command of the company's last strike force, annihilated in the early stage of Operation Nekar. He was just 19 years old at that time and commanded a group of 22 Gustavs. After being exhausted by endless combats, the other joint became a prisoner of mercenary troops. However, while being a prisoner, he gathered the soldiers in camp and made a successful breakout. His leadership in battle was later highly regarded by the mercenary troops. Even the prison guards were paying their respects to him by calling him his codename, Seahorse 19. Number 3. This is the armor suit of Gunther Matter. 1st Squadron, 1st Regiment, 44th Combat Aviation Company. Most members of this unit have bachelor's or doctorate degrees. This elite unit was famous for their low attribution and top-notch combat and damage ratio. Number 4. This is Corporal Oswald Lemke, 5th Company, 12th Armored Troopers. When his unit enlisted Gustav, the troops had already destroyed five enemy units with the previous PKH series models. The symbol of Black Serpent was originally a personal insignia of the corporal. Later, it was used as the company's marker. And that will be all for today's video, and I hope you will enjoy the content. And just a quick thought here. I am thinking about putting the, my translation um, on the combat scheme card directly. So without making any sort of video because, you know, sometimes my pronunciation might not be perfect without subtitles, it might be difficult for some of the audience you know, to understand what I'm really saying. <laughs> and another thing is making them a PDF document is much faster than making the whole video. So I hope you can consider this, which you prefer, video or just a straightforward PDF document every week or every two weeks.